after uh, the impact of, uh, of my first mural, I realized I could take that further. And by further, I meant uh, interviewing the people in the mural, getting their voice, and even making the mural video. So Time Magazine had offered me to do a cover, and I don't really do commission work. Uh, but I told the editor of Time, look, if I can do something that I couldn't do without you, I'd love to do a, a cover for you guys. And he said, well, what subject would you want to work on? And I said, well, I live in the US since nine years, and I still don't understand uh, 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 why is there so many mass shootings and why people can get those kind of heavy weapons so freely. And he said, well, we could work on that. And I pitched him an idea of um, a mural that would have 250 people around one table, like if they were debating, but people from each side, people who are like NRA, people who are like CIA, people who are like governors, mayors, uh, Black Lives Matter, Black Gun Matter, people who are hunters, from the whole spectrum, from the mother of Mike Brown to uh, a hunter, I wanted to put everyone around the same table. And we went a bit of all over the US in St. Louis, we went in uh, uh, Washington DC, we went in Dallas, and in all of those places, we have asked the people to be part of that debate. What was really interesting there is that those people wouldn't have said yes for me. They said yes because they would be on the cover of Time magazine. And they don't necessarily would meet actually the people who are against them or against their ideas uh, because I would get them one by one. But people were really skeptical at the beginning and we had to talk them through and explain them how everyone would be represented, how he wanted to be represented. And then, yes, the magazine would do some interviews, but on the cover, I would record the audio of the people and I would not touch it, I would not record it. It would be exactly the audio they recorded. Whatever story they wanted to share would be shared exactly like it is. Now, the thing in this mural, you might be seeing the photo or the video, it's moving. And which means that we had to ask non-actors and people who are, you know, real people to enact like if they were in the debate. And it was really interesting because each of them would suddenly go and be like, no, I want to be, you know, fighting against this or about this or about that or for this. And some others wanted to just be listening and some others wanted to just be contemplating. And it created this, you know, a, a section of mural where those 250 people are all part of one conversation. Now, when that was done, it made the cover of Time magazine. And right away, we organized screenings and installations and exhibition about it all over the US. The reason why we did that, even if sometime we would do it for one night in a museum, it's pretty simple because the power of those murals is actually when people get together, when people do connect in real life. So you take Dallas, for example, and for one night it was in the main museum there, in the Dallas Contemporary Art Museum, and people were invited to the opening people from each side, people who are pro and against, and people would come there and they would be very proud already to be on the cover of time, but suddenly they're in the museum, they would dress up, bring their family, and when they get there, they'd be in the same room with the people who also came and dressed up and came with their whole family, but that doesn't share at all the same idea. Well, the thing is those people never end up in the same room, never get to discuss their ideas. And in the mural, they had shared their own personal stories, which means that they actually we tell why they're pro or against, why they're against because they had lost someone close from them. And when people got to the museum, of course, the first thing they do, they would listen to the stories of the people they would see and say, oh, what's this guy's story? It's almost like something you would want to do in the street, be able to you know, listen to the story of anyone without actually asking them. And once they would listen, they would actually, it would humanize the person and be like, oh, okay, I see where you're coming from. I see why you have those ideas. And we notice people talking to each other. And someone would say, look, I know we don't share the same point of view. And I understand that you lost someone close to you. You lost your son. You lost your brother. You lost your mother uh, in, a, in, 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 a, in a shooting. 
uh, uh, and maybe we should regulate it this way or that way. And we realized discussions that normally don't happen started happening. And it showed me one more time the power of muralism that have been forever. It's just that, you know, I'm almost rediscovering things that in art have been there. And I'm sure that at the time of those muralists, they had seen the power of representing the community. But there it was on one subject. So it gave me the strength and confidence to keep on walking. And actually, this mural keep traveling in different places and it's still being exhibited. And I remember telling the people that the cover of time was one thing, but the mural would stay in books, in history books and in you know, museums like you're seeing it today. And in that case, you can still read those stories and see the complexity of the debate.